There is a lot of flu out there. We kind of accused you of having it a few weeks ago. Federal health officials say it may be with us for weeks to come. The weekly flu report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows the number of people seeking treatment for flu-like symptoms is as high as it was during the peak of the 2009 H1N1 flu epidemic. The number of child deaths from flu-related illnesses this season is up to 63. And though flu season started in October, we have so many questions about the potentially deadly virus. Dr. Nina Radcliffe is here to break it all down. Let's start with the flu exam. So if people think, I'm feeling under the weather, I don't feel good, I'm icky, and they go in to see you, Dr. Nina, what are you going to do? Well, the first thing we do whenever you go in to see your doctor or healthcare provider is we check your vital signs. Okay. And this is important because vital signs are vital. Mm -hmm. So we'll check your temperature. And if you have the flu, it's likely it's going to be elevated. Okay. And then also we'll check your heart rate. And many times because of the fever and your body's working on overtime, we see an increase in heart rate. And the reason I point this out, out is because when your heart rate is increased for most of it's not most of us it's not a problem but for people who have heart disease this can become deadly so these are some of the things that we as healthcare professionals look at to see should you go to the emergency room should you be admitted as a patient so these are things we want to see we'll check your blood pressure we'll also check the way your oxygen is being delivered to your body so these are key indicators they are vital in that things that you can determine and people at home might not be able to see exactly well, let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing in doctors' offices and emergency rooms, it's bad this season. Yes, it, it's a brutal flu season. We are seeing patients in the droves. They are filling up the waiting rooms. They are in the hallways. It is very brutal. And for those of you, like I said, if you are at home, for most of us, it's a very bad cold. You stay at home, you're in bed, it goes away within a few days, but for some it can be deadly and it can have complications. So if you're at home and you're wondering, should I go in? It's cold outside. It's snowing outside. Right. There's sleet. There's rain. Here's some of the indications. If you're feeling short of breath, mm -hmm. please go in because that means the flu or maybe a pneumonia with a bacteria has gone down lower uh -huh. into your lungs. Okay. And when this happens, it can kill you within a few days. And then if you have a fever over 101 and you try to take Tylenol and still hasn't gone down or acetaminophen, that is an indication that your body may not be able to fight it. And then finally, if you are so fatigued, you're so tired, you just can't get out of bed, please go in, not even just to the doctor's office, go into the emergency room. You may need to be admitted. Okay, let's talk about this. If you've gotten the flu shot, you've done all you can to protect yourself, sometimes it's diet that will help. So let's yes. walk us through some of the items right. that we can eat that help with immunity. Right. And just in general, I do want to point out the flu shot is the most effective means of boosting your immunity against fighting the flu. So even though it's considered to be 30% effective, it is very critical. Okay. So yes. So let's go through the food options that okay. you've laid out. There's a lot yeah. of them. So our immune system is an army. It's complex. It's intricate, but it is a fierce army. We don't even completely understand how it works, but what we do know is it takes building blocks. It takes nutrients, vitamins, and proteins for it to function at its very best. And so these are some foods with zinc, and zinc is involved in a number of enzyme processes, and in, especially in the immune system. So mushrooms, whatever type of mushrooms is rich in zinc. We have oatmeal, almonds, pumpkin season, of course, oysters. Oysters? Yes. And because our body cannot store zinc, it's important we eat it every day. So you need a small amount of zinc every single every day. day. Okay. Yes. Dairy, is that leave it out or make sure you add it? Well, this is for selenium. It's a trace mineral. Oh. We don't need too much of it, but we do need enough for our immune system to be robust. And so milk, eggs, cheese, um, and also you can do lean meats as well. Okay. Yes. The greens don't surprise me. No. <laughs> what do you think the greens are? Ooh, vitamin C. Close. Oh, I'm not. Iron. So oh. beans. <laughs> we'll get there. So spinach is okay. full of iron. Beans. And there's a number of different things that have iron. So make sure you get that. Um, and then vitamin C where you are. So vitamin C is important because it helps blood flow to different parts of your body. It keeps our blood flow very healthy. And that's important because we want to deliver all of our antibodies and all of our killer cells and macrophages. And these are different types of cells in our immune system. So in order for it to flow nicely, we want to get plenty of vitamin C. So it's not just, you know, no oranges, it's lemons and limes and Brussels sprouts and even the red and um, green bell peppers. Love it. Yes. And then also there's some other medicinal herbs. So we know that garlic has a distinct odor, but that sulfur containing odor actually is deadly to um, viruses, it's deadly to fungal um, and as well as bacteria. So that's very good. So add in a little bit of garlic whenever you get a chance. And ginger, we don't know how it works, but it, we've been using it for over 5,000 years and it has some properties to fight 
fight off bacteria and different types of viruses. And of course, things that have probiotics such as yogurt, it contains healthy bacteria that helps rebalance our body against the bad bacteria and it just gives us an edge. Dr. Nina, thank you. Thank you.